Show with Ben Darnell in your afternoon drive. Henry Bienemy is in here doing video. Kirk Kaplan's on the one and twos, keeping us on the air, doing all the great ins and outs and stuff that he does to keep you very happy. Um, let's start with Adam Wainwright because he might be, uh, Henry gave me this uh, earlier, he might be the last guy uh, for a while that wins 200 games in Major League Baseball. And we've known this for a while. We've known this. We've gone from 300 to 200, and it's going to – you don't finish what you start. You don't even get close to finishing what you start. You leave it up to these jabronis in the bullpen. If you don't have an Edwin Diaz or somebody of that talent uh, or ilk, you're not going to win a lot of those games. The team may eventually win in extra innings with ghost runners, et cetera, um, but you're not going to get credit for it. Um, but Adam Wainwright, he got his 200th victory against the Milwaukee Brewers, which was huge, by the way, uh, helping some of the wildcard teams gain some ground on them. Yes, so thank they you. Be thank happy you, that the lowly Cardinals were able to beat them and get that 200 win. One of the win. few times, but yes. But we knew that Adam Wainwright is on his way out as well. So this was, you know, he only had, I think, two more starts. Possibly he may not even make any more of those starts because he wants to, uh, you know, enjoy 200 here. Well, you think that's a good round number to end on? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, all right. So let me let me put this to you. So Cole Hamels is 39. He's in sixth place of active pitchers right now that are, you know. So Verlander's got 255. Granke's got 224. Scherzer's 214. Kershaw's 209. Um, I don't think anybody gets 300. Uh, Adam Wainwright just got 200. Cole Hamels is at 163, but he's an ancient guy. Uh, Johnny Cueto's at 144. He's 37. I don't think so. The only guy right here is number eight on this list is Garrett Cole, 32 years old. He is rolling, still unbelievable. They've actually not won a bunch of his games this year. At least a dozen have been team losses where they've been close games that he came out of. 143 wins for Garrett Cole. I mean, it, it, baseball pitching is at, is at an all-time low as far as starters go right now. Um, where's Verlander in that mix? He's at 255. Okay. He's got no shot at 300. Golly. He's 40. Yeah, I mean, just, I'm just looking at the all-time right now, and, and, man, you know the number one, right? Obviously, it's an obvious one. Do you know number Cy one? Cy Young. Cy Young. Do you know the number of wins Cy Young had? Uh, I think it was like 500. 511. Yeah. 511 wins. But he also had over 300 losses. True. And he only pitched, and I say and he this. He also had over 600 complete games, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct. But he also, and I say this only because it's somewhat around everyone else, 22-year career. Like, it's a lot. It's but back a lot. Then they had three pitchers in your rotation, and you had nobody really in the bullpen. You had everyday players that would come in and finish games and stuff like that. And, and they didn't throw 95 max effort every pitch. These but, guys are blowing out at an alarming rate. So true. But when we're talking about all-time list and the guys that actually had 300, really like Randy Johnson, um, Tom Seavers, and I'm putting Tom Seavers in like the this era category. Uh, not many, not many that were born before 1960. It's just the way things are going right now. I, I think that this is a feat that's, I don't think anyone born right now is ever going to see a 200 win pitcher. No one. Uh, Bartolo Colon's up there with 247. He's, did he just retire? Did they just do like a retirement thing for the Mets? He made it official. I think they just did another like barbecue for him. Yeah. I don't think they retired. Him. I think everybody was He's like still playing ball somewhere. You always see him not playing videos. Well, if you offered him a job, he'd be out there today. He would be ready to pitch. Uh, but we all know how long he's pitched. Zach Granke's up there at two twenty four. No, no way. Like they're they're just no, so far guys. away. Even as much as we love Scherz, Scherz is thirty eight years old. He's only pitched for sixteen years compared to the rest of the guys. He's at two fourteen. Like uh, Kershaw has been pitching forever. He's only been pitching for 16 years. He's at 209. Again, again if you look at these guys, let, let me just take like, uh, let me take Steve Carlton, for example. Wakefield ended with 200 round number. That's awesome. Oh, I don't have his thing in front awesome. of me. But the, these guys all had 200 complete games. They didn't, they didn't let, you know, I, somebody was asking me about this the other day, and I tried to explain that. I came in a game, and as good as I was as an all-star and all that kind of stuff, the starters were so PO'd at me 
They did not want to come out of the game. They wanted yeah. to fight me. Yeah. They wouldn't leave the mound. Like Tom Browning, the reason they call him Bulldog, he didn't want to leave the mound. Jose, Re- they they thought we were weak and we were going to blow their games up. So they did. They didn't want any part of a reliever coming in. Reliever was like weak. It's it's it's, the, it's like a, a plague kind of thing, you know. And so um, the, these guys, they and if you blew it, I've already told you the story about Jim Abbott freaking out. Yeah. And almost beat me to death with a bat, you know. But he wasn't really angry at me. He was just angry at the fact that he didn't get the win. The team didn't get the win, and I was the one who blew it up. But um, that's that's the mentality and the way it should still be. I don't want to relinquish the ball. Now you see guys are happy to see the manager walk out in the sixth inning. Yeah, and, and I was watching a game last night, as, as a matter of fact. And I'm watching the guy, and I can't remember. It was the Marlins. They were playing the Mets. And this guy had been struggling. And his, his pitch rate is like 20 pitches per inning. So he's at 80 pitches going into the fourth inning. Okay. And they're like, that's not that bad. I, I wanted to smack the TV. Not that bad. That's atrocious. That's the way it is. That's now, atrocious. Man. That's the way it so is. So saying 80 pitches in three and two thirds innings is not that bad shows you the the mentality, the brainwashing, the analytics people have dumbed down this game. Whether it's hitting and hitting at a 220 average is okay. No, it's not. 250 is not okay. It's mediocre at best. 80 pitches in the fourth inning is mediocrity. A four and a half ERA for six innings work is mediocrity. So we have to get away from that. And I don't know how you do it because I just read the timeline on uh, Shohei and you heard it in Dr. Olson's interview that I was reading that before we interviewed him. I wanted to do my homework on it. Yeah. Otani, when he broke his nail is when they slowed him down. Yes. So his nail failure led to his Tommy John injury recurring because they felt like if we slow him down and give him an extra day on the next start, so they went six days in between starts, then they went seven, then they went 13, and then by the fifth start is when he hurt his elbow. And by then they rested him again. When he came back against the Reds, his velocity was down uh, considerably, considerably I'd say probably eight miles an hour. Slower than what he normally threw. Get an MRI. Got a, a torn UCL. So you know, and there's really nothing in there that said we should slow this guy down other than a broken nail. I used to break my nails all the time. Like every time I won the game, I broke my nail or I had a blister. You're talking about and, this. And uh, it's just, the just something that you deal with. Yeah. You know, it's going to happen. I would be out there and it would be bleeding. I would be cutting my thumb with my my fingernails when I would over amp a, a breaking ball. And so that, but that's just part of the game. That's what you're doing. So to, to every time a guy gets a hangnail or a guy gets uh, whatever and you back him off, it could lead to something disastrous. And I'm saying you should also be cautionary on a leg injury. Guy tweaks an ankle. A guy tweaks a knee. I'll go back to Eric Gagne. They changed his mechanics in spring training with the Dodgers. You know what he ended up doing? Hurting his elbow for the second time. Needed Tommy John and, uh, surgery a second time. And that was all because they were like, oh, you know what, it's okay uh, with a knee injury. So you've got to have pluses and minuses in here um, that are built in. A guy like Leo Mazzoni who could really help these big league pitching coaches, nowhere near the big leagues. They don't allow the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. That throwing every day is good. That backing people off is not. Just like to get a complete game now is is such a bargain for you and the and the coach and really the pitching staff and the, and the analytics. Bull, yeah, the staff. bullpen. I mean, you're you're resting your bullpen. How does th- th- that make sense? Because now they're fresher for the next game, and maybe that guy goes deep into a game, and so a couple other guys get two days off in a row. That's better for the next game, and that's what you want because September and October is where you win championships, not April and May. And, and everybody keeps pressing this April and May button, like, oh, we got to be ready, we got to be ready. No, you don't. And that's why it brings us to our, our next guy, Edwin Diaz. He will not throw this year. Who's one of the first people to say he shouldn't throw this year? Me. Guy blows out his knee. There's no reason no to reason. Rush, rush back from a, a patella tendon tear in six months to throw a stupid baseball. But they tried it. And so finally the Mets, uh, probably Steve Cohen saying, hey, listen, we just paid this guy a boatload of money. Why are we resting hurting this guy? Might hurt his arm. 
Let's shut them down. They shut them down for the last two weeks of the season. I remember doing this exercise last year as far as how many guys have complete games, and it was Sandy Alcantara who led the major leagues with I just, six. Uh, I did this list for you on Friday. There's like five teams with three complete games combined Correct. for the whole year. Correct, and usually it's the same guy. So last year, when it comes to guys that have more than one complete game, there were four. That was Aaron Nola, Nathan Eovaldi, Framber Valdez, and Sandy Alcantara. Now you go back to this year, the 2023 stats, and there are six. Ooh, all right, six guys. But it is Framber Valdez, Nathan Eovaldi, Sandy Alcantara, and then throw some newcomers in there, Jordan Lyles, Alex Cobb, and no, excuse me, five, not six, five. I was wrong. But then you look at win totals. This year, Dibs, I don't think you're going to have a 20-win pitcher. Isn't that wow? Not, Isn't that wow? Not but even a 20-win pitcher. I brought pitcher. this up on Friday. I'll bring it up again. Of the last six teams in Major League Baseball and where they are record-wise, some of the worst teams that you see here, Rockies, A's, Royals, Nationals, White Sox, Cardinals. Of those teams... Five of those teams have no complete games. Not surprised. Not surprised. So the formula of let's turn it over to the eight jabronis in the bullpen is not working. I guess not. But someone somewhere thinks it is. This is why I keep saying this and harping on this, because in the winter meetings, these boneheads will sit around a room and go like, hey, the pitching was really good this year, right? Yeah, okay, let's keep doing what we're doing. No, it's not. So max effort doesn't work. And here's the thing. You can go back to some of these guys that are now finally in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and uh, you know, like the, the oh, my God, um, Burt Blylevin. He had 247 complete games. And you had guys, analysts I worked with on ESPN, and said, that guy's not a Hall of Famer. Dude, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. The fact that that guy stayed out there, he won 290 games in his career. The reason his team won so many more games, because he stayed out there and saved the bullpen. You don't understand the dynamics of a four-man rotation when these guys pitched. Okay? So to say that because he didn't have 300 wins, we're talking about 200 wins now. Ten years after some of these guys are out of the game, or 20 years after some of these guys are out of the game, now we're talking about such a drop-off in guys completing games where they would complete 15, 20, I could go to Bob Gibson because he's one of my idols. Bob Gibson, back-to-back years, 28 complete games, 28 complete games, had 42 and 42 starts in each year. And one of those years was where the, his ERA was so low, they lowered the mound five inches from 15 to 10, 1968. That's why we have, And then you have a, 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 a commissioner. We already have a pitching shortage. Let's move the mound back a foot. And there's some people that actually are like, oh, that's okay. That's smart. Yeah, he's a brilliant guy. He's an idiot. If you want to do anything, move it up a foot. Let me ask you this. You want this. to do anything to help the pitchers move the mound closer or move it back to 15 inches. Is Wayne Wright a Hall of Famer? Yes. Yes, with the championships, with the post-game stu- postseason stuff, I absolutely think he's a Hall of Famer by today's standards. Not by 20 years ago, that's Hall of Fame standards. That's why today's standards. Because there's, we no longer credit the, the guys with a lot of complete games. We no longer complete, you know, uh, credit guys for 350 wins, 300 wins, uh, you know, a bunch of shutouts, you know, doing the job. But what I was getting at was also I wanted to finish on this. Uh, I know we're, we're tight on time. These guys also slowed their pitches down. When they got in trouble, 2-0, and 3-1, and they threw off-speed stuff. Now guys start you with off-speed. Now they throw 60%, 70% off speed. It's damaging their arms, shortening their careers. They can't finish games because they don't have the stamina because they've thrown 80 pitches in four innings. Exactly. Because they're nibble, 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 nibble. I don't want to attack the zone anymore. And it behooves you, too, because these guys can't hit. I know. <laughs> there's, there's 15 teams hitting below 245, and, and you still of- don't want to attack the strike zone. Why do you think I love watching Garrett Cole pitch? I love watching that guy. You know why? He attacks, attacks, attacks. And when he's done, he's done. But he's given, you know, 100 of his best pitches. He's thrown first, like, uh, 18 out of 25 guys that he's faced, 18 first pitch strikes, which we always talk about, you know, you want to do numbers, 7 out of 10 times leads to an out. Um, and, and, but he's, he's economical. And so he's saving his arm. So he's one of the few guys that I think on this list 
can get to 200 wins because he'll still have, still have an arm in 10 years. And the other fact I'll bring up is there, there's only one guy that's had more than 50 home runs this year so far, and that's Matt Olson. Nobody probably had him as the home run king when we started this season. Um, because you were so focused on Shohei. I mean, even Garrett Cole. And, you know, yep. I talk your head off about my guy, Justin Steele, from the Cubs. I see these guys give up some big-time home runs, and they're throwing 100-plus. But those home runs are usually solo shots, and they're usually in the first three innings. And those guys do not waver from what they were doing. And they are the best in both of their leagues. I will say that right now. They are the best in both their leagues because – they are trying to be as economical as possible, and they believe that their stuff is better than anything that you got in your bat. The last thing I will say that these numbers don't jive with the analytics departments. So 20 out of 30 major league teams, the ERAs. Now, remember that when they were talking about juice baseballs about 20 years ago yeah. and even maybe even 25 years ago, especially in, in the American League, their ERAs were over four. We were still in the threes in the National League. 20 teams right now, starting today's game, after 150 starts, ERA over four. So you have batting averages at an all-time low, but earned run averages as at an all-time high. Go figure. It doesn't jive. Right. I, it's not balanced. So this is what I'm saying. If you were going to say, well, God, pitchers are dominating. No. We all are consumed by the home run. We are all trying to get launch angle. And at the same time that the batting averages are going down, the ERAs are going up because we have a bunch of pitchers that are afraid of that. I don't want to face a guy that's trying to hit a softball moonshot. Did you see Schwarber's home run last night? Went out of the stadium. Yeah. Guy's hitting 200. Yeah. That's exactly my point. You have a big softball-looking mo foe like Schwarber that that guy's trying to drive the ball 500, yard, 500 feet every time he swings the bat. Right. If I'm out there trying to pitch, I'm like, I gotta get away from that. I gotta, I can't, I can't challenge him, because God forbid he hits one, he hits it 500 feet. I'm embarrassed. That's the problem with baseball right now. It's too much like a video game. Five guys are pitching with an ERA below three. Five. How many guys are hitting 300? Five. Ooh, let's check that five. stat out. I don't know for sure. I think sure. you have a five for five. Wow. Well, a lot of the guys in the ERA, like they're my faves, man. Blake Snell, Justin Steele, Garrett Cole, Sonny Gray, Kodai Sanga. Those are your uh, pitchers that have a ERA under uh, three. I've got your average right here. So you got a rise at 354. You got Acuna at 336. Freddie Freeman still there, 335. Corey Seager. Yandy Diaz. We got 10 guys at 300, right? Nine. Nine guys. So you got nine guys. And one Shohei who's not playing anymore. All right. So let's say we got 10 and we got five guys that have those low ERAs. Think about that, man. It's insane, man. That's that's not good. It's not good. And it's not good for the product. The bottom line I always think about is what you're consuming, what you're watching. And if you're consuming mediocrity every night, you're going to be – honestly, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I love baseball. I love watching Red Sox, Mets, and Yankees. I've watched 140-something other games. This year. This year. Yeah. Uh, but I stopped when college football started. September's Three, tough. Yeah, September's tough for me. Football, it, it consumes me than the NFL, and I'm just all in. Love it. Now I'm watching – I'd rather watch WNBA playoffs – before I'll watch baseball games. Big night Wednesday. Yeah. Are you sure, man? Because uh, my Cubs, your Reds, I'm severely nervous about a Pirates game tonight in Chicago, and I never think that. I love Ever it. think that. I love it. I am on the Reds edge of my fire. Seat. What have they won? Six out of eight? I think if you are a Cubs fan, a Reds fan, a Marlins fan, a Giants oh, fan, feet. Seat. Diamondbacks fan, I'm having nervous breakdowns around 7.30 every night. And my neighbors, as much as like playoff hockey, thinks my, my neighbors think I'm a crazy person. They're like, what the hell is he yelling at? Cody Bellinger? Why is he? Don't forget, <laughs> Giants are only two out of that uh, Dude, the NL wild third card's spot. Unreal. It's fantastic. I, I don't think you Philly fans should feel safe either. We still got two more weeks of baseball, week and a half. A lot of things could happen in the wild card race. All right. Uh, what kind of illnesses do we face this uh, fall My Cubs season? better not get COVID in the next couple of weeks. Dr. Ulysses Wu is uh, the chief epidemiologist at Hartford Healthcare and Bone and Joint.